I always think of myself when I do think about what I do, because it is kind of so varied, but I always think of myself as a writer. Since I was a kid, I'd wanted to be a writer and be able to call myself a writer. And it's only sort of after nine books and, and I don't know how many thousands of articles that I would sort of say that I'm a writer because I really do think it's a muscle. You have to exercise that muscle and sometimes it takes a very long time before you get good at it. I like that it challenges me every day. I like that it's something that I've always wanted to do. I get a chance to do it. I get a chance to have people read what I do and hopefully enjoy it. Uh, or not, you know, either way, it's a get a reaction one way or the other. It doesn't matter what kind of reaction you get as long as you get one. I think because my entire career has been shaped around popular culture and being an observer of popular culture and talking about it and writing about it, and I think probably my most formative years uh, were spent in Liverpool, Nova Scotia, the tiny town that I grew up in, because it was there, I think, that I got the first and, and really varied taste of popular culture. I was a kid, grew up in the 70s, so there was, you know, a boom in television uh, that was aimed directly at my age group. Uh, amazing music, all that kind of thing was swirling around me. But m most importantly for me, I think, was uh, this movie theater in the town that I grew up in called the Astor Theater. They had movies every week, but they had a really mixed bag of movies. And it really gave me uh, an appreciation for the uh, width and breadth of the movie business, of popular culture. Uh, I loved going to see movies uh, that were really highly visual in nature or going to see uh, kung fu movies that hadn't been dubbed into English. So I really had no idea what the story was except I could make up my own or I could follow it through the visuals. And that kind of thing has stayed with me right straight through to today. When you know I, I go to the movies now, I still look for really visual. I want, I want the story to be told visually. I want my eyeballs to dance. When I was a, a younger guy starting writing, Kurt Vonnegut Jr. had a two-page spread in, in Rolling Stone magazine. And it was his top 10 pointers for young writers. The first one was tell a good story, and then the rest of them, all nine of them, were keep it simple. And that was above every typewriter or computer or keyboard or whatever it was for decades. And that really stayed with me. There's so much noise around us all the time, whether it's social media or, you know, 5,000 channels on your television or whatever it is, cell phones going off all the time. There's so much noise everywhere that the idea of simplicity is a really overlooked concept. And I think that if you can manage to, in your work life, for me, in my creative life, keeping it simple has always worked better for me. I think that you can get far more into the subject and get deeper and, and have more people read it and understand it. I kind of think of the books, uh, particularly my book about Ken Russell uh, called uh, Raising Hell, Ken Russell and the Unmaking of the Devils, and the Elvis Costello book, Elvis is King, um, I think of those as documentaries with words. I tend to think in those kind of terms. And I think of those books as being very documentary style books. The first rule of filmmaking, as far as I'm concerned, is show me, don't tell me. My favorite moments in movies are always those moments when people keep their mouths shut and do something that tells me everything that I need to know about the character or everything that I need to know about that moment. I love the, the idea that if you show somebody, if you show a room full of people something, that there can be lots of different interpretations to one visual image. And that to me is, is kind of the magic of, of going to the movies. In some ways, getting cancer was one of the, the best things that's probably ever happened to me. It made me grateful for things again. It made me not take things for granted. It made me not take people for granted. It made me not take my career for granted. I think sometimes when you've done it for a long time, and this is 20 years for me of doing this, that you can start to take things for granted, that it will just always be there. And I've learned not to do that. I've learned that you can't. You always have to be moving forward.